special meeting of the Baltimore, Baltimore County Planning Board. It is now called to order. I'm Nancy Hafford, the chair, and we will now start our meeting with a roll call with our members that are present. When you hear your name, please say aye. Mr. Array. Miss Brophy. Aye. Miss German. Aye. Mr. Hafer. Mr. Heckman. I see Mr. Heckman's on there. There he's waving his hand. <laughs> Mr. Heinel. Mr. Hinton. Aye. Mr. Halipka. Scott. He's present. Mr. Johnson. Mr. McGinnis. Here. Mr. Perlow. Miss Pinero. Here. Here. Mr. Warren. Here. Miss Wolfson. Here. Thank you. Please join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Ms. Bensley, are there any changes to the tentative agendas published? No changes, Madam Chair. Thank you. Tonight, thank you all for your hard work, the planning board and the planning staff. Um, but tonight, the board has an opportunity to further deliberate and vote on the Master Plan 2030. This item was first introduced to the board on May 4th, 2023. A virtual public hearing was conducted on May 18th, 2023. On June 1st, June 8th, and June 15th, the board had opportunity to discuss the plan and propose changes. Before opening the floor up for discussion, I would now like to turn things over to the Department of Planning for additional comments. Mr. Lafferty, or Ms. Mante, do you have anything further you'd like to add? Madam Chair, thank you very much for <clears throat> the opportunity to say a few words. First, let me thank you and thank the board members for the deliberations, the comments, the suggestions, the thoughtfulness that's gone into uh, the various discussions and amendments that have been put forward. Uh, I know all of you take this very, very seriously and recognize the importance of this to the, to the county for the next decade. I also really need to thank uh, the staff from the planning department as well as staff from other agencies that helped get us to this point in time. Uh, really led on our side by Amy Mante and Jen Meacham, but everybody in the department you know, participated at one time or another as I said, we had input from other agencies as we worked through the vision framework and growth framework to reflect concerns, issues, and ideas that each of them was able to bring forward. I think I want to reiterate that you know, the goal that we had in going forward in this, for not only in this format, but this approach was to focus on redevelopment as being essential to the county's future. Uh, and to the future growth of the county. Uh, as was indicated in the uh, draft plan, uh, the number of sort of undeveloped uh, greenfield acreage is diminishing. Uh, and so we need to refocus where there's already been development uh, or where we can think about redevelopment. At the same time, we've always acknowledged that uh, where allowed, other development or construction will take place. Uh, it's not to be confused with growth, though. Uh, targeting and focusing growth is not the same as enabling, as we do with our zoning, uh, the uh, actual development of residential or commercial structures. Um, and where growth takes place, 
is really important. That's why we have focused on the retrofits and identified so many nodes uh, for potential development activity uh, and realize that the neighborhoods themselves, the fabric of our existing neighborhoods are critical to sustaining the quality of life that Baltimore Countyans not only enjoy, but want to see for themselves and for the future. Um, and we're largely a suburban jurisdiction uh, with some densities reflected in apartments in different parts of the county, almost every part of the county, inside the herbal at least. Uh, and we think that the place types that we've identified in the draft uh, that's before you also are distinguishable and help to visually and, and actually in, in a sense of future development look at separately. Uh, we recognize that a couple of the ideas that we advanced, including changes to the CDMP, uh, were obviously took a lot of time to discuss. Um, there's an alternative being presented in the uh, amendments today. Uh, we realized the existence of the PUD, the plan unit development, has also been critical uh, to uh, many development opportunities in the county. And, as the board discussed and is also suggested as an amendment, uh, may need time, it's time to re-examine that. Uh, and also the special use that we had designated TPA and now are recommending UMBC be included uh, in that category for its unique role on the west side of the county. But also that part of the Lafarge property, currently 415 undeveloped acres, uh, part of it also is recommended for special use, and that's part of our discussion tonight. But I think it's just important to sort of, sort of loop back to how we got here and the structure and the work that really has led us to wanting as the format of our APA for sustaining places. So how do we sustain the quality of life, maintain the quality neighborhoods, and yet open up for future growth opportunities? So. Uh, Thanks for the opportunity, and Nancy, to say a few words. And once again, thanks to the board and all the staff for all their hard work. Thank you, Mr. Lafferty. I appreciate that. Um, at this time, do any of the board members have any questions before we move on to discuss the master plan? Uh, Madam for Chair, you. I just wanted to let you know I was present, Steve Heinel. Oh, I saw you. <laughs> okay, any other questions or comments? Nancy, procedurally, are we going to go just start at number one and just work our way through the? Yes, yes, we are, Mr. Okay. Warren. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, are there any other questions at this time? If not, may I entertain a motion? Motion. No. Uh, Mr. Um, Palipka, would you read the motion, please? I don't, I think you're, are you on mute? You're on mute, Scott. Here. He doesn't appear to be on mute, but we can't hear him. Okay. Um, just turn his video off. Does another board member have the motion? Ms. Brophy, do you have the published agenda? I do I do have the agenda. Let me grab the motion real quick. Okay. Um, so be it moved that in accordance with section, is that, is that the one? Yes. Yeah, thank okay. You. I just want to make sure. Thank you. <laughs> be it moved that in accordance with section 32-2-201 of the Baltimore County Code, the Baltimore County Planning Board hereby adopts the Baltimore County Master Plan 2030 draft presented May 5th, 2023 with amendments as of June 29th, 2023 and refers the plan to the Baltimore County Council for further consideration and adoption. The amendments are as follows. See Master Plan 
2030 planning board amendments for a vote or a document for suggested motion on amendments. Do I have a second? Second. I, I, I thought we were I'll, gonna go through each motion. That's what we're gonna do, Mr. Warren, but we have to have a document to be able to go through the amendments. It's not adopted yet. We have to adopt it and then we go through the amendments. That's, that's what we it. did. That's how we've done, that was done in 2010. Well, that doesn't make sense. I'm not gonna adopt it the way it is right now and then amend it. That doesn't make any sense at all. Mr. Warren, it's, it's fairly, common to have a motion for the document and then to introduce amendments to and vote on each amendment to determine whether or not the document as it is or as amended would then go forward. So you have to, there's the, what has to be on the floor or on the table is a motion to adopt the draft plan and then members may make amendments to alter uh, its content. You can't vote on an amendment until you have the actual document before you. You don't vote on the document until you vote on amendments. Correct. The final vote will not take place until after all the amendments that you wish to consider are considered. So it's only a second, it's only a motion and a second at this stage without a vote on the actual document. Okay, so do we, we, we had a second by Ms. Wolfson. All right, I'm gonna go down board members. Um, Mr. Array. Yes. Ms. German. Madam Chair. Aye. Ma Madam Chair. Yeah, yes. yes, Mr. Lafferty. You have a motion and a second. It now is right. for discussion or for introduction of the amendments. Oh. Sorry. You're not, you're not voting on the you're not <laughs> voting on the motion yet, right? Thank, okay, thank you. I apologize. Okay, what we're going to do hey, is Nancy. I'm going to call. Yes. This is Chris Hafer. I am on for as long as this oh. internet connection lasts. Oh. Thank you, Miss Hafer, for, for Mr. Hafer, for taking the time to join us. I appreciate it. I know you're probably halfway around the world. So did you just the Arctic on? circle in Norway in Norway? Oh. <laughs> well, um, so I, I know you've heard the recent discussion we just had. So now we're going to go to um, the dif different sequestered items. When I call for each one, if someone would like to make a suggested motion. So, and then I will call from on a vote from all our board members. So on item number one, would someone like to make a motion? I will make a motion that we do not use the story map with attachments, that that goes to a reference page. So all the... Um, Mr. Warren. It has to be very specific. Do you see the suggested motion, which is very specific? If if not, can one of the other members that introduced it? I can do it. Thank you. Uh, motion to remove all hyperlinks to websites outside of the master plan 2030. Story maps from all master plan 2030 story maps and place them in a resource page on the master plan 2030 hub. Thank you, Mrs. Panero. I second. I'm, I appreciate that. All right, now I'm going to do a roll call for item number one. Yay, nay, abstain, or absent, whatever you prefer. And that's how it's going to be on all the um, items that we discussed. Mr. Array. Yes. Ms. Brophy. Yay. Ms. German. Yay. Mr. Hafer. Yay. Mr. Heckman. Yay. Yeah. Mr. Heinel. Yay. Mr. Hinton. Yay. Mr. Halipka. 
Yay. Mr. Johnson. Yay. Mr. McGinnis. Yay. Mr. Curlow. Mr. Perlow. I'm having problems staying in also. Yay, I said. Thank you. Ms. Panero. Yay. Mr. Warren. Yay. Ms. Wolfson. No. Item number two. Does anyone want to bring that up or let it go? Sure, I'll read it. Um, motion to add a statement about the new resource page on the master plan 2030 hub in the overview, how the plan is used. After the section starting, main topic headings can be found in the table of contents of the story map. Replace it with a resource page has been located on the master plan 2030 hub. This page provides additional information on many of the topics in the plan. Thank you. Mr. Array. Yeah. Ms. Brophy. Yay. Ms. German. Yay. Mr. Hafer. Yay. Mr. Heckman. Yay. Mr. Heinel. Yay. Mr. Hinton. Yay. Mr. Halipka. Yay. Mr. Johnson. Yay. Mr. McGinnis. Yay. Mr. Perlow. Yay. Ms. Panero. Yay. Mr. Warren. Yay. Ms. Wolfson. Yay. Thank you. Item number three. This is a motion to add the following statement in the master plan 2030 overview introduction. After the paragraph starting with several mandates, it will now say um, section 34-4-102A of the Baltimore County Code indicates that development shall conform to the master plan and any adopted community plans. The purpose of the master plan 2030 is to encourage and even incentivize growth and, re and development within these areas deemed most suitable for retrofitting or retrofit areas. However, growth and development may occur anywhere within the URTL and in certain areas outside of the URTL where zoning would permit it. Incentivizing growth in certain areas does not mean growth outside of those areas is inconsistent with the master plan 2030. Thank you. Mr. Array. Yeah. You need, Matt, Mr. Sorry, you need a second for the motion. I'm sorry, a second, please. Second. Thank you. Mr. Array. Yeah. Ms. Brophy. Yay. Ms. German. Yay. Mr. Hafer. Yay. Mr. Heckman. Yay. Mr. Heinel. Yay. Mr. Hinton. Yay. Mr. Halipka. Yay. Mr. Johnson. Yay. Mr. McGinnis. Yay. Mr. Perlow. Yay. Ms. Panero. Yay. Mr. Warren. Yay. Ms. Wolfson. No. Thank you. Item number four. Motion to add the following statement in the master plan 2030 overview, how the plan is used. OV dot, uh, dot four after the 1st paragraph in that section development activity in the core retrofit areas, like all development will require the requisite infrastructure to, to support this new approach. While these core retrofit areas must be the primary focus for development and investment over the next decade. Development activity is permitted outside these areas and will, will continue based on the market and other opportunities. May I have a second? Second. Okay. 
Mr. Array. Yes. Ms. Brophy. Aye. Ms. German. Yay. Mr. Hafer. Yay. Mr. Heckman. Yay. Mr. Heinel. Yay. Mr. Hinton. Yay. Mr. Halipka. Yay. Mr. Johnson. Yay. Mr. McGinnis. Yay. Mr. Perlow. Yay. Ms. Panero. Yay. Mr. Warren. Yay. Ms. Wolfson. No. Item number five. Motion to add the updated version of the commonly used terms that has been amended to include only terms and definitions and removes links to sources. Source information can be found on a separate resource page. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Array? Yes. Ms. Brophy? Yay. Ms. German? Yay. Mr. Hafer? Yay. Mr. Heckman. Yay. Mr. Heinel. Yay. Mr. Hinton. Yay. Mr. Halipka. Yay. Mr. Johnson. Yay. Mr. McGinnis. Yay. Mr. Perlow. Yay. Ms. Panero. Yay. Mr. Warren. Yay. Ms. Wolfson. No. Item number six. So I'm going to admit, make a, a small amendment to this. So um, planning staff, I can send you a, a written copy of this after the meeting. Uh, the motion is to revise livable built environment goal one action one to read as follows. Baltimore County's urban rural demarcation line, hurdle, was established over 50 years ago and has not been systematically reviewed for at least four decades. Prior to beginning work on the next master plan, the planning board and staff should conduct a comprehensive review of the urban rural demarcation line to determine whether it has contributed to past racial and economic segregation and is meeting the current and future needs of Baltimore County and the Baltimore region. Um, Mr. Chairman, I, I question the need for this amendment because it's already going to be uh, handled by the next group, next uh, planning uh, 20 year plan. Well, there's been a motion and a second. And so what we're going to do is take a roll call and then we'll decide if this passes or not. But Madam Chair, are we allowed the discussion at all on any of these? Yeah, yeah I, I, absolutely. Okay. Um, I, oh God. Uh, Scott, can I ask you a clarification question on the, on this, which I agree with, by the way, but is it totally meant to replace goal one, action one, or is it in addition to this? I think it replaces because I, I don't have it in front of me, but goal one, action one before just sort of sort of enshrined the hurdle. And the goal here is not to enshrine it, but to say that it's something that, you know, we should be looking at on some sort of periodic basis. So I see it as replacing. Okay, I'm looking at it now, Scott, and it says, I mean, while I agree with what you're saying, but in the meantime, shouldn't this master plan 2030, um, we are saying that it is supposed to reinforce the existing hurdle. Until such time that we uh, may want to look at changing that, but in the meantime, what what should the plan not reinforce the existing hurdle? I, I take your point. I I have no problem with with amending it that way. Yeah, I I think you could just add your amendment to that action one. Um, to that first sentence, just add it onto it, tag it onto it. I think it would be fine. I, I'm recommending that once you decide 
what you want to say, you restate it and we call for a second to make sure it's clear for all the planning board members. Mark, since you have it in front of you, can you read it? Happy to do that, Scott. So under livable built sorry, environment. Mark, not to cut you off, but um, I'm sorry, is it Taylor that's sharing her screen? Would you would you mind sharing what Mark's reading just so that um all the planning board members can see as well? I am not sharing my screen. It's Jen. There we go. No, Jen. There Thank we go. you, Jen. But do we also need to see the existing language? I think that's where Jen's going now. Right, right. So it's kind of like just so we understand what we're adding to or or taking away from. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Sure. So it's part of the vision framework goal one point goal and action one point one. I think it's livable built environment. Right, right. Okay, good. Hey, Mr. Heckman. So I, I'm recommending that we retain the first sentence and I'll read it. Create a re redevelopment framework that reinforces the existing urban rural demarcation line, URL, and focuses on redevelopment strategies through community planning policies. And then after that, add Scott's. Baltimore County's hurdle was established over 50 years ago and has not been systematically reviewed for at least four decades. Um, prior to beginning work on the next master plan, the planning board and staff should conduct a comprehensive review of the hurdle to determine whether it's still meeting the current and future needs of Baltimore County and the Baltimore region. And then Scott, you had an additional sentence, I believe. Yes, and well, I've a clause that um, that as part of the the review that we also look at to what degree it may have contributed to past racial and economic segregation. And I think that went in under the determined. To determine if correct, so it comes after the word determine, Scott. Right. So it'd be to determine whether it has contributed to past racial and economic segregation, and then and is meeting the current and future needs of Baltimore County and the Baltimore region. Are the planning board members clear with what was just stated and. Um, oh, you don't know it hasn't been considered. You just know it hasn't been changed. Wayne, I know of no comprehensive study or report that's been done in 40 years. Can you tell me of any? You mean that none of the uh, previous groups have even considered it, let alone making a motion? There has been no, I have seen no comprehensive reports or anything that made it. Yeah, they may have had discussions in, in meetings, but there has been no that I'm aware of. There's no comprehensive, you know, data collection planning comparing to other. There have been no reports again, not that I've ever seen. Okay, so I second the motion. Okay, then I'm going to do a roll call. Is it Mr. Lafferty? Is that all right with the motion that's been yes. made? Is it clear on the motion made by Mr. Heckman? Then yes. Okay, correct. Mr. Array. Yes. With the amendment that. Well, that's, uh, he, he, read that's, that, right. he read that time. Todd. Mr. Array. Yes. Miss Brophy. Yay. Miss Miss German. I'm sorry, Miss German. Yay. Thank you. Mr. Hafer. Yay. Mr. Heckman. Yay. Mr. Heinel. Yay. Mr. Hinton. Yay. 
Mr. Halipka. Yay. Mr. Johnson. Yay. Mr. McGinnis. No. Mr. Perlo. Yay. Ms. Pinero. Yay. Mr. Warren. Yay. Ms. Wolfson. Ms. Wolfson. Yay. Thank you. Item number seven. Acceptable as, as put. And Mr. Warren, can you read the motion? Yeah, I'm driving in a car, so I'll do my best here. Yes. Uh, here. No, 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 no. If you're driving, do you want to have somebody else read it, please? Would that be okay? I can Let do it. Else read it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the motion is to revise the livable built environment goal one action two, LBE one point two to read as follows. Evaluate the current planned unit development HUD process to assess its success and ensure it is transparent, clearly articulates eligibility requirements, conveys tangible community benefits, and ensures a higher quality development. Thank you, Ms. Brophy. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Thank you. Mr. Array. Yeah. Ms. Brophy. Yay. Ms. German. Mr. Hafer. Yay. Mr. Heckman. Yay. Mr. Heinel. Yay. Mr. Hinton. Yay. Mr. Halipka. Yay. Mr. Johnson. Yay. Mr. McGinnis. Yay. Mr. Perlow. Yay. Ms. Pinero. Yay. Mr. Warren. Yay. Ms. Wolfson. No. Thank you. Item number eight. Does anyone want to make a motion on item I, number eight? I can. Uh, motion to remove livable built environment goal one action five. Thank you, Ms. Panero. Do I have a second? second. Thank second. you, Mr. Mr. Array. Yeah. Ms. Brophy. Yay. Ms. German. Yay. Mr. Hafer. Yay. Mr. Heckman. Yay. Mr. Heinel. Yay. Mr. Hinton. Yay. Mr. Halipka. Yay. Mr. Johnson. Yay. Mr. McGinnis. Yay. Mr. Perlow. Yay. Ms. Panero. Yay. Mr. Warren. Yay. Ms. Wolfson. No. Item number nine. Motion. Do I have a motion? Motion to remove livable built environment goal one action eight. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. Yeah. Array. Yes. Ms. Brophy. Yay. Ms. German. Yay. Mr. Hafer. Yay. Mr. Heckman. Yay. Mr. Heinel. Yay. Mr. Hinton. Yay. Mr. Halipka. Yay. Mr. Johnson. Yay. Mr. McGinnis. Yay. Mr. Perlow. Yay. Ms. Panero. Yay. Mr. Warren. Yay. 
Miss Wolfson. No. Item number 10. I, I move to revise the livable built environment goal one action eight to read as follows. The planning department, I think that's a typo, Amy. The planning department and the planning board shall create a task force to study the current comprehensive zoning map process and recommend improvements to make it more effective and easier for retrofitting communities as proposed in the growth framework. May I have a second? Second. Can I ask a question real quick on that? Does that move, are we removing the 10 year with the, I see that crossed out below, so I wanna make sure that yeah, this is um, uh, just suggesting that we remove the 10 years, but we still look at and study whether it's the best process we can come up with. All right, Mark, I'm cool with that. Thank you. And I did have a second, correct? Correct. Yes, I seconded. it. Thank you. Mr. Array. Yes. Ms. Brophy. Yay. Ms. German. Yay. Mr. Hafer. Yay. Mr. Heckman. Yay. Mr. Heinel. Yay. Mr. Hinton. Yay. Mr. Halipka. Yay. Mr. Johnson. Yay. Mr. McGinnis. Yay. Mr. Perlo. Yay. Ms. Panero. Yay. Mr. Warren. Yay. Ms. Wolfson. No. Item number 11. Um, that's me again. Um, and I believe we talked about this at our last meeting. I move to add a new action to livable built environment. Goal to action 9 to read as follows. In support of encouraging the new development of attainable housing consistent with retrofitting communities as proposed in the growth framework, the Baltimore County Department of Housing and Community Development shall identify and pull currently available Baltimore County, state, and federal incentives and resources available to residents and developers. In addition, DHCD, in concert with other county departments, shall identify and propose potential new incentives, which may include additional financial assistance, new infrastructure and public improvements, as well as administrative support, which may include streamlining and expediting county approval processes. Thank, Thank you. Mr. Array. Yes. No, Ms. I want to, uh, Madam Chairman, I'd like to object. Oh. Discussion? Um, I object to this because of the following reasons. What we're doing is uh, increasing the density in one area based uh, 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 on outside monies and uh, incentivizing people from the area around the area to move to this area for free stuff. Now, what it does is increasing the uh, density without increasing the, uh, without regard to the schools, the effect it has on schools and the effects it has on the people currently living in those areas. People who have worked for decades or, or generations to live in a safe uh, environment, and then they have a uh, overwhelming number of people put right next to them. What this, and what, what this does eventually is they get fed up and they will sell and move further out away from there. Thank, thank you, Mr. McGinnis. We, ha we have a motion and a second, so we need to do a roll call on the motion as on, on the floor. Well, the discussion so, Mr. comes Mr. after the second. Okay, is there any? Madam, Madam Chair, this Madam Chair, this is Bev German. I think we, after a motion is made and seconded, I do think that we have an, we should have an opportunity Absolutely. to have uh, Okay. Any other questions or comments? 
Hi, this is Chris. How does this motion differ from what? Oh, this is this, so from what was. So this is a new action. This isn't revising old language. That's correct, Chris. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, Madam Chair, my my question is: Does the planning board have authority to tell the depart another department what they should or should not do? I don't think we have that ability. We're we're an advisory board. We're 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 just an we're an advisory board. You vote on zoning, so, though. So I. And the motion says so I, something that I, it encourages. It doesn't require anything. It, 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 right. It, it, the language was it encourages. Okay. Okay. That clarifies it for me. Thank you. You're very welcome. Is there any other questions? Madam Chair, if the if the uh, board is concerned about what appears to be directing a particular agency could leave it simply Baltimore County and leave it broadly and just strike the Department of Housing and Community Development and say Baltimore County shall identify and pool. In other words, it's a, and we have other actions that are directing or recommending the county take action. So it could be broader and just say the county, even though I know Mr. Heckman is quite concerned about accountability um, that if you just said Baltimore County instead of DHCD might achieve the same goal. I support that, Steve. That's a good fix. I, I, I agree with I agree with Mr. Heckman. If you don't have some teeth in it, it, it goes nowhere. So having a name, I, I support. Mr. Heckman, this is your motion. How would you like to proceed? I um I think um I don't want to say they shall do it. I am encouraging them to do it and the county to do it. Yeah, um, you take out you take out the Department of Housing and Community Development. I agree with what Steve just proposed. You know, say the county. Instead Mr. of Mr. Wright, when you when you speak, could you put your head up so because we can hear you a little better. Yeah, I was saying that I agree with what Steve just proposed. Take remove uh, the housing and community development. You just put the county, Baltimore County Shah. That way, you don't mention any particular agency. And I agree with Mr. Array on that. Well, but this is Mr. Heckman's motion, so. Mr. Heckman, do you feel comfortable with those changes? And then everybody has the right to say they don't agree with it and they want to change it to the way that Mr. Lafferty suggested. So yeah, I think we can have a vote and then yeah. if it passes, then. Yeah, I, I guess I feel like it's the, we should identify the appropriate agency that should be doing it. And I think it's DHCD um, and 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 assign it to them. Otherwise, it just kind of gets lost in the whole Baltimore County umbrella. But if if it doesn't pass, I'd be willing to change it to what Steve suggests. Is it shall so, or may then in the language? Yeah, I think it should be may. Mr. Heckman, it's your motion. Is it shall or may? Who suggested May? Someone just asked that question. Yeah. I don't, I don't even see May in there. It says encourage. See where shall or May is in there. But I'm driving. So. Oh, oh my God. It's it, May. In the section about DHCD, it says DHCD shall identify. Uh, All right. I moved it to be changed to May. Well, Wait a minute, Mr. Heckman, do, are, th this is your motion. Um, you know, I, I want this to happen. So I want it to be like clear that they shall do it. Not okay, so, yeah. so what we have is Mr. Heckman's original motion. We have a second and then we will do a roll call. And if it doesn't pass, 
then we will re we could we'll look at what other options that we have. Yes. Yeah. Are everybody comfortable with that? Yeah, Madam Chair, but you see, you know, the county covers every agency on that on the county means every agency of the county. So there's no need mentioning any county agency in there. We say the county may. It covers every department within the county. There's so not, there's not what, been, I'm sorry. So, but what we have is Mr. Heckman's um, motion. So, if people don't feel comfortable with the language, you just say nay, and then we restruct, or you guys, you pick what you, how you want it to say, you feel comfortable with. Madam Chair, so, I call for a roll call vote. Thank you. So, Ms. German, you're seconding his motion. Is, no. I need a second. Does is there a second for Mr. Heckman's motion? Second. Second. Okay. Then we'll do a roll call. Again, Mr. Array. Yes. Miss Brophy. Yay. Miss German. No. Mr. Hafer. No. Mr. Heckman. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Heinel. No. Mr. Hinton. Yay. Mr. Holitka. Yay. Mr. Johnson. No. Mr. McGinnis. No. Mr. Perlo. Yay. Ms. Pinero. Yay. Mr. Warren. Yay. Ms. Ms. Wolfson. No. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight yeses. One, two, three, four, five, six nays. Motion passes. Okay. Number 12. So these next two motions are are sort of new. Um, given the recent announcements about the, you know, the red line being back on track, it's simply trying to make the master plan acknowledge and, and try to work with that. So the first motion is to revise <coughs> is to add a new action to the livable built environment, goal three, action 10, to say that we will work with the MTA, Baltimore city and county communities to establish an east to west transit service, a red line that runs from west of Security Square Mall and Woodlawn into Trade Point Atlantic and possibly Essex. Second. Second. Mr. Array. Um, yes. Sorry, Madam Chair, may I ask a question? Absolutely. Um, Mr. Halipka, can you just clarify who is working with the MTA? Because you just have it as work with the MTA, Baltimore City and County. Are you suggesting the planning department or whom are you suggesting? Good question. Uh, and let me see if I can find. Mr. Olympia, if I can jump in for a minute. Sure. Um, yep. Currently, um, there is between planning, the Department of Public Works and Transportation, and the administration um, conversations underway. So it could be uh, you could add the administration or the county government, uh, something of that nature, if it makes it clear. So, uh, Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Array. Is, already, there's, there's going to be coordination between the county, Baltimore County, Baltimore City, and state. So, is it really necessary for this to be in here? I think the, the reason that they were introducing it is the master plan has no discussion 
of this of the red line area and now that it, it wasn't on the table before it just was something new that came out so that's why they are looking to address it because it, i don't know if you remember under hogan it it, it dropped they didn't they weren't going to do anything so that's why it wasn't in the master plan right i was working on this when i was with transportation because he dropped this but i'm just saying whether it is mentioned in, in here or not, there is still going to be coordination. We are not creating the law here. There's already the Department of Planning, Transportation, <laughs> local government. They are they have that obligation to coordinate with the state. So do we really have uh, the urge to mention this in here? Does that even belong here? And why is it in here, Madam Chair? Yes, um, this is um, Mr. Johnson. I, I personally have a problem with adding this without having a discussion. We've had three or four meetings and I know it just came up, but I just feel more comfortable. I would feel more comfortable if we had a chance to discuss this and really look at it before we just add it to it. But that's just my personal opinion. So, I mean, I, I can vote against it, but I'm just saying, I just think it's better if we had discussion about it during our previous sessions rather than just trying to, you know, work on it now. Yeah, but, Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Yeah, Madam Chair, what I'm saying is whether it is in it here or not, it is still going to happen because there's already coordination between all the departments, including Baltimore County Planning Board, Transportation, and all the other agencies. So what I'm saying is it doesn't even have a place. It doesn't belong in here. It's an indication. We don't have to mention it. We have no role in it, but it's going to happen whether it is in here or not. So should it be in here? It should not be an item that we should even vote on. Well, one of our fellow board members felt it was important to put it in here. So what I think we need to do is um, uh, Mr. Halipka made a motion and we'll see if we get a second and then we'll see if it passes. If it doesn't pass, if there's no, then, then we don't make a, a, a different motion, then it just doesn't go in. So, Mr. Halipka, do you want to um, still entertain the motion as you presented it? I can't, we can't hear you, Mr. Halipka. Sorry, went the wrong way. Other than adding, as Ms. Brophy suggested, that the county shall work with the MTA and then go on from there. Thank you. Okay, is everybody clear on Mr. Halipka's motion? If so, can I have a second? Second as amended. Okay, Mr. Array. Yes. Ms. Brophy. Yay. Ms. German. Yay. Mr. Hafer. No. Mr. Heckman. Yay. Mr. Heinel. No. Mr. Hinton. Yay. Mr. Halipka. Yay. Miss, Mr. Johnson. No. Mr. McGinnis. No. Mr. Perlow. Yay. Miss Pinero. Yay. Mr. Warren. Yay. Miss Wolfson. Mm. Yay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Miss Wolfson. Yay. Thank you. Motion carries. Number 13. So th this simply inserts the same sort of language into uh, a second part under responsible regionalism, goal two, action one. Um, and again, I'll amend this, that the county shall collaborate with Baltimore City, State, and Baltimore County communities to establish a transit service that runs from west of Security Square Mall, east into Trade Point Atlantic, and potentially into Essex. Any discussion? May I yeah, have a this second? This is Chris. Uh, I had a... Okay, go ahead. I had a question for Steve Lafferty, which is, um, is it is it just common practice to have the same kind of 
goal in two different places, or or is it the uh, the practice to have kind of one goal in one place? I, I don't know what the what the practice is on this, but it just seems to be redundant to me. It's like pick pick a lane and and be in that lane. Well, I think that, that's a great point. Um, we do address transportation and the need for transit and growing our transit system in the transportation and livable built environment. Uh, at the same time, we have a set of regional goals. So I don't think it's unnecessarily redundant because depending on where you're focusing your uh, your attention, if you will, whether it's on regional issues or on transportation per se. But certainly if the board feels it is redundant, as you're suggesting, uh, it could be stretching from one of these Okay, so we have um do any other questions? If not hearing any, do I have a second? Um, second as amended. Thank you, Mr. Array. Yes. Ms. Brophy. Yay. Ms. German. Yay. Mr. Hafer. No. Mr. Heckman. Yay. Mr. Heinel. No. Mr. Hinton. Yay. Mr. Halipka. Yay. Mr. Johnson. No. Mr. McGinnis. Yay. Mr. Perlow. Yay. Ms. Pinero. <laughs> Yay. Mr. Warren. Yay. Ms. Wolfson. Yay. Motion passes. Item number 14. Motion to 14, revise. Five. Yeah, yeah, I got you, Todd. Somebody read it for me. Um, motion to revise resilient economy goal three, action two to read as follows. Implement the recommendations from the report in response to County Council Resolution 12-20, Agricultural Buildings for Value at Agriculture, September 2022, including new zoning definitions, adaptive reuse, changes in the county's review process, and agricultural building exemptions. Mr. Laverty, could you explain that? Yes, in, in 2020, there was a, a work group that came forward with a set of recommendations to look at. Initially, it was focused on agricultural buildings, but in, therefore it dealt with the process by which uh, ag buildings have been approved, as well as the uses of the buildings in what's referred to as value-added agriculture. The items that are identified specifically in this motion are the categories that were reviewed in that report. Um, and as I think Mr. Warren made reference at the last meeting, the report was never formally adopted or the council never acted on the provisions. And so it really is looking at that report and pulling out the items that they had recommended be addressed. There are three different zoning definitions depending on the intensity of the use by value added agriculture. And value added could be a brewery, it could be a winery, it could be um, corn mazes, or it could be a uh, where someone is actually uh, educating uh, the community about ag agricultural practices. Um, and so the definitions, there are three sets of definitions that are referred to as well in this report. And is it my understanding that this would replace the current um, goal three action two, which is to evaluate regulations to support the growth of craft breweries, wineries, culinary industries? Yes, Mr. That, that was my understanding, as Mr. Warren said. Okay. Yes, guys, I, I wanted to implement the plan that Wally Lippenholz said. 
So we're, we're so we're being encouraged to implement a plan that hasn't been adopted by the county council, and instead of studying or evaluating the regulations as they apply to this, we are expected to implement unevaluated um, be unevaluated regulations. Is that what we're being asked to do, Todd? They were already evaluated and studied and presented. It just never got acted on. The whole plan is around trying to utilize the land outside the hurdle for the use of, of the community and to generate economic value on these properties. Todd, did the council sign off, uh, accept the report? I guess that's sort of the question. I, it's never been brought, I don't know, even know if it was brought to the council at all. So it, it never got, it got, we reviewed it, we approved it, and sent it, but I don't know that it was ever even looked at. Okay, if there's no further discussion, Todd has a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Now we'll do a roll call, Mr. Array. Yes. Ms. Brophy. I'm sorry? Ms. Brophy? Yay. Thank you. Ms. German. No. Mr. Hafer. Yes. Mr. Heckman. Yay. Mr. Heinel. Yay. Mr. Hinton. Yay. Mr. Halitka. Yay. Mr. Johnson. Mr. McGinnis. Yay. Mr. Perlow. Yay. Ms. Pinero. Yay. Mr. Warren. Yay. Ms. Wolfson. No. Motion carries. Item number 15. This is a motion to revise the first statement in the growth framework uh, to now read as follows. Uh, I'll note that I'm going to make one small edit to what we had before. Um, it's to add the following statement. Uh, additional analysis was completed by the planning department to remove sites that were too small to fit the redevelopment philosophy or not appropriate for redevelopment. Examples of sites not appropriate for redevelopment include sites owned by state or community colleges, Baltimore County park or school sites, or DGE utility sites. Period. I would drop the trade point Atlantic. I mean, I think that was included because it's its own separate entity, but I don't think we want to make it somehow sound like redevelopment is not appropriate there. That's kind of the whole point of the site. Just it's not housing. So you're you're removing the trade point. Yep. Thank you. And and Mr. Warren just seconded it. Any questions? Mr. Array. Yes. Ms. Brophy. Yay. Ms. German. Yay. Mr. Hafer. Yes. Mr. Heckman. Yay. Mr. Heinel. Yay. Mr. Hinton. Yay. Mr. Halipka. Yay. Mr. Halipka. Miss Mr. Johnson. Yay. Mr. McGinnis. Yay. Mr. Perlow. Yay. Ms. Pinero. Yay. Mr. Warren. Yay. Ms. Wolfson. Yay. Thank you. 
Item number 16. I motion to add the following statements to growth framework place types GF5 after the statement, the master plan 2030 place types map provides general recommendations for land use based upon the vision framework goals and actions, as well as the retrofit analysis described above. In particular, the map identifies areas deemed most suitable for retrofitting. Growth and development with the, within these areas should be encouraged and even incentivized. However, development may occur anywhere within the Ertl and in certain areas outside of the Ertl where zoning would permit it. Incentivizing growth in certain areas does not mean growth outside of those areas is inconsistent with the Master Plan 2030. The map is conceptual, conceptual and intended to reflect future land use patterns that would support the land use objectives of the Master Plan 2030. The map does not identify land use of individual properties or parcels. The place type maps will provide general direction for county land use decisions and may be amended as needed through community plans or small area plans. Thank you. Do I have a sec? Any questions? Second. May, Madam Chair, may I ask Ms. Pinero a question? Please. Yes. So, Katie, in the second uh, or that last paragraph where it says, uh, incentivizing growth in certain areas does not mean with outside those areas is inconsistent. Do you mean development or actual growth? Because the previous statement has to do with allowing development as we know it will occur, whether it's by infill or perhaps outside the herbal even. But are you talking about growth areas? Because that does seem in a way uh, inconsistent with focusing on the retrofit area. Just development in general. Mm -hmm. So, would you be comfortable with changing the word instead of uh, growth outside, saying development outside the those areas? I would say yeah. Okay. Because development, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's fine. I'm totally fine with removing growth. Okay. So instead of growth and development within these areas, just have it be development within these areas should be encouraged and even incentivized. Okay, so it's incentivizing growth in these certain areas, meaning retrofit areas, does not mean development outside of those areas would be inconsistent. Correct. Okay, okay. Thank you. Is that acceptable amendment then, Madam Chair? And it's development. You say development inside or outside? Outside, okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm okay with the second on that too. Still okay. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Array. Yes. Miss Brophy. Yay. Miss German. Yay. Mr. Hafer. Yes. Mr. Heckman. Yay. Mr. Heinel. Yay. Mr. Hinton. Yay. Mr. Halipka. Yay. Mr. Johnson. Yay. Mr. McGinnis. Yay. Mr. Perlow. Yay. Ms. Benero. Yay. Mr. Warren. Yay. Ms. Wolfson. No. I am number 17A. Okay, I motion to revise the gross growth framework place types GF5 descriptions for established neighborhood to read as follows. Areas within the Ertl, not, with, not within connected neighborhoods and nodes consist of a mix of established commercial, industrial, and residential areas. Although mo much of this area is already developed, there is still opportunity for new and infill development and redevelopment. The neighborhoods are served with public water and sewer service. Primary land use, commercial, industrial, and low or medium density residential. Secondary land use, civic institutional, open space, limited ex accessory dwelling units, ADUs. Motion to revise growth framework place types, GF5 descriptions for connected neighborhoods to read as follows. Areas- uh, uh, Ms. Panero. Yes. I think we have it broken down into A and B. So we, I think we need to vote on a first. Oh, okay. I don't, I don't see that. Um, but. Madam chair. Yes, 
Um, 17 and 18, uh, well, 17, 18, and 19 are alternatives. Uh, Ms. Mante may be able to describe the difference. 17, which was Ms. Pinero, has been broken out into two pieces, one established neighborhoods, and then the other's connected neighborhoods. Whereas 18 and 19 from Mr. Heckman sort of are focused on the same issues about established neighborhood and connected neighborhoods. So um, maybe Ms. Mante can describe some of the differences. Um, and it's not to say not to vote on Ms. Pinero's, only that there's a difference with Mr. Heckman's, which the board members may want one or the other. Thank you. Um, Ms. Mante, can you please elaborate on that? Um, what, I, okay, um, so 17A and 17B, um, I just took what um, Honey Board Member Punero initially provided us and just noted that it was gonna need two motions. So that's why there's two motions for that. Um, 18 is the, um, uh, motion that was put or the amendment that was put forth by um, Planning Board Member Heckman. Um, it does look like there is, you know, some difference there between um, kind of his description of the connected neighborhoods and nodes. Um, I mean, I, I would have to go back and read exactly where it was, but um, see here, 18 and 19. Yeah, I going back and reading it all. I don't know off the top of my head what the exact is. It's just some difference to the language and identifying the nodes in the connected neighborhood. So, in other words, if we had uh, uh, Miss Panero's motion on 17A, mm -hmm. and then Mr. Heckman would have a similar version on 18 and so that would change miss panero's miss miss panero and mr heckman can you come together on the changes and we can vote on one instead of of the like yeah i'll be um happy to try to explain i i don't disagree with everything that um katie is suggesting in in 17a and 17b Although I tried to provide a slightly more um, definition to what a connected neighborhood is versus an established neighborhood, because I'm afraid when I read um, uh, Katie's versions of it, they almost sound like they're the same. You know, they both um, they both complain, contain commercial, industrial. So what's the difference uh, between 17A and 17B? Um, it's it's there's not much of a distinction. It kind of blurs the lines, I think, too much between what is a connected neighborhood and an established neighborhood, and primarily the difference is in the established neighborhood. In that you know established neighborhoods are supposed to be you know the where it's primarily um, residential. And and we don't want, I don't I think, to encourage industrial development or a bunch of commercial development. That's not to say it doesn't exist in those neighborhoods, of course. But I don't think it should be the primary um, land use in those in those neighborhoods. Those you know, single family housing, nice little neighborhoods. Um, and I think we've received. I understand. Um, Planning department has received some comments from leaders from different neighborhoods, Perry Hall, Middle River, those are the ones I can recall, um, that are concerned about the fact that, you know, if we don't say something like, and I inserted the sentence, the nature and character of those neighborhoods should not substantially change within, you know, the next 10 years of of the master plan, um, then, um, then we're going to lose the character of those neighborhoods. 
and I, th I think our goal should be in established neighborhoods. We don't want to substantially change the character by allowing a bunch of commercial um, and industrial development. And Mr. Heckman, I don't disagree, and I don't have all of my paperwork with me as I am on vacation, and unfortunately, I left it at home. But I, the issue that I have, if I remember correctly from my notes, is that, uh, like, particularly that the areas that I know well, like the York Road corridor, I believe, showed this as an uh, established neighborhood on the map. That does already, I mean, if anybody is familiar with York Road and the Timonium um, area, Timonium Lutherville Cockeysville area. That area does have an extreme amount of commercial. Um, it does have industrial. You have to go quite a large, uh, you know, several, like at least a half a mile, if not more, to get to residential. So the current map as is already shows that. If if I'm if I'm remembering my notes correctly. Yeah, I think I think you're you're correct. There are some corridors, and I think you could even say Reister Town is similar um but the the plan has identified certain areas of those as nodes and that um you know you have your nodes and then you have your connected neighborhoods around those nodes which does allow some commercial and um, industrial and then beyond that is where you have your mostly single family neighborhoods and those are established neighborhoods. So I was just suggesting that we don't mess with the established neighborhoods so much and um, keep the commercial um, development and office buildings and things like that. Acknowledge that that can happen within the connected neighborhoods. Okay, I would definitely ask though for this this portion to be removed. Suburban neighborhoods generally consisting of moderate density, predominantly detached single family homes built post World War II that will remain as such for this foreseeable future. That sentence just does not. Um, yeah, and and I to me. I agree, Katie, and that's why I struck it as well. Okay, good. I oh, I see that. Yeah, so this is Chris. I, I have both of them in front of me on paper, and the only difference between the two that I can see is that in marks, it's that there's one sentence. However, the nature and character of these neighborhoods is not expected to substantially change within the next decade. Katie, if that sentence can be added to yours, um, then that that's it, because the lang otherwise the language is identical. I, the 1 issue I have with that is that I hate committing anything to 10 years. Yeah, and I, gotta, I gotta say, if I could jump in, I, I gotta say that I, I. My challenge with this is that we're going to, you know, the whole plan is built around a. 15 minute city and bike ability and that these communities may change dramatically. Um, and we may want to redevelop some of this. I mean, I, you know, I think stabilized communities were built, you know, especially before World War II. That's that's, that's oh, especially we're going through this whole generational change too with people. It's I, I would I would second Katie's amendment. Yeah, I just I, I'd be willing to drop the next decade. I'd be willing to drop that and just say in the immediate future or something like that. In the future. Yeah. And there's also a significant difference in that Katie's motions contain the word industrial and Mark's do not. So that would be a significant difference between the two motions. And this is one of the reasons why I wanted the um, the definition of industrial included was so that I, I think industrial gets sort of a bad rap. Um, and I'd like to know what industrial exactly is how that is defined because I, I industrial does not mean trade point Atlantic you know when we but, have but or but it can but it can it's what it can mean not what it intends to mean it's what can it mean do we have the definition of industrial in that zoning regulation well I asked to have it added um to the list of definitions that was provided. And that's what I wrote you back, 
this morning about or yesterday and you said just you were asking to change the language in this motion um let me pull up the uh, last version where i had it there and it's where uh, another thing sorry just to go back to where while amy looks for that um for me it's where i believe it says um established commercial established industrial established residential areas um it's already you know it's already developed areas but they're still develop like area we still want to be able to use to develop it or redevelop that area since it's almost much not all of course not most but much of the area is already currently developed I just don't think we should limit anything without further evaluating the particular project or the site. Okay. Mark, in your words, why did you remove where higher density, new, or infill development um, can occur? Why did you move that where the, um, I think it says where higher density or new? I, I, because I didn't want it to make it sound like we were suggesting that it had to be higher density. Okay. I'm okay with residential development, um, low density, medium density, or whatever. But it's with with this, it says um, it almost sounds like we're encouraging higher density. Can we call these to a vote and determine? Absolutely. I think what we, we should do is can everyone take a moment to read um, Ms. Panero's motion and then Mr. Um, Heckman's motion? And then we'll, and the one you feel the most comfortable with, you support or change it. So we're right now we have Ms. Panero's motion. Do you want and me to second. do you want me to read just the first one? Yeah. Yeah. Two of them. The one that she right. read first. So we're just gonna vote on 17A first and then 17B. Okay. Do I I have a sec um, Mr. Lafferty? Were you no, saying I, I something? Think so, yes. Yeah, and that's what, how I have it broken down. Thank and you. If her motion doesn't pass, then Mr. Heckman's motion or a variety of variation on that. Thank you. Okay, uh, Ms. Panero made a motion, and do I have a second? Second. Mr. Array. Mr. Array. No. Miss Brophy. Nay. Miss German. Nay. Mr. Hafer. Yes. Mr. Heckman. Nay. Mr. Heinel. Yes. Mr. Hint um Hinton. Mr. Halipka. No. Mr. Johnson. No. Mr. McGinnis. No. Mr. Perlow. Yay. Ms. Panero. Yay. Mr. Warren. Yay. Ms. Wolfson. No. No, motion does not carry. Um, 17B. Motion to revive, revise growth framework place types, GF5 descriptions for connecting neighborhoods read as follows. Areas connecting established neighborhoods and nodes that consist of a mix of commercial, industrial, and residential areas where higher density, new or infill development or re redevelopment could occur, including a variety of housing types, such as detached family, single family, townhomes, and apartments. These places contain the population needed to support the node which they surround. Primary land use, commercial, industrial, and medium and high density residential. 
So, a, so just to clarify, so the same thing as 17A is equivalent to Mr. Heckman's 18, 17B is also equivalent to the 19, is that right? Correct. Okay, thank you. Any discussion? If not, can I have a second? Second. Second. Mr. Array? No. Ms. Brophy? Nay. Ms. German? Nay. Mr. Hafer? Yes. Mr. Heckman? Nay. Mr. Heinel? Yes. Mr. Hinton? Nay. Mr. Halipka? No. Mr. Johnson? Yay. Mr. McGinnis? No. Mr. Perlow? Yay. Ms. Pinero? Yay. Mr. Warren? Yay. Ms. Wolfson? No. Motion does not carry. Item number 18. Um, I know, but I'm going to modify this to accommodate some of the suggestions. I move to revise place type established neighborhoods to read as follows. Areas within the hurdle, not within connected neighborhoods and nodes consist of a mix of established commercial and residential uses. Although much of this area is already developed, there is some limited opportunity for new and infill development and redevelopment. However, the nature and character of these neighborhoods should, instead of is not expected, to substantially change within the near future instead of the 10 year commitment. The neighborhoods are currently served within public water and sewer service. Could you read that back one more, that last sentence back one more time, please, Mark, when you said. However, the nature and character of these neighborhoods should not substantially change within the near future. Thank you. Second. Okay. Oh, wait, Nancy, can we just, can I just have one second to read this just real quick before we jump to a vote? Sure. Hello? Ms. Panera, are you ready? Sorry, my children w walked in. Um, what I, let me, Mr. Heckman, would you be okay? Although much of this area is already developed, there's some, blah, blah, blah. however, the nature and character of these neighborhoods is not expected to substantially change within the next decade. The nature and character of the established residential areas within these neighborhoods would you be okay with nature and character of the established residential areas within these neighborhoods is not expected to substantially change in the near future? Just just put residential areas instead of these neighborhoods. I would be willing to do that, Katie. Okay, Mr. Hegman, this is Peter. Is there a reason why we, you, we cannot remove however the last sentence? Because you don't know whether it may change tomorrow or not. Is there a reason why we, we cannot remove however? Just put 
leap uh, with the period after redevelopment? Because you are making an assumption that it may not change, but you don't know that. We don't know that. I'm sorry, Peter, I'm having a hard time. Okay, so what I'm proposing is the last sentence should be removed. The neighborhoods, the neighborhoods are currently served with public no. water and sewer. No, well, yeah, no, however, however, it's, however yeah. it, 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 I don't think that it belongs there, it should be removed. You should put a period after redevelopment because we, you don't know whether there will be a change tomorrow or in five years. So you don't know that. So we can assume that there will be no change. Well, I, I kind of think that's the um, I think that's the point. That's the point, Peter. I think we as the planning board could suggest that these um, residential neighborhoods, as Katie's proposing it, should not substantially change. We want to preserve the character um, understand. of the of these neighborhoods. So I, I think I think we're kind of saying the same thing just differently. All right, is everyone clear with Mr. Heckman's motion? I'm Mr. Sure, Madam Chair, okay. if I may ask. Wait, 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 Mr. Lafferty? I just want to ask Ms. Pinheiro, since the definition of established neighborhood includes commercial and residential, why would you only focus on the residential and not consider the commercial as well? I think it's more important to worry about the nature and character of residential neighborhoods more so than it is a commercial development or commercial area. I guess I think, and you mentioned York Road earlier, uh, down you know, down on York Road in the southern end where you have older commercial districts like where the Stonely shops are and things of that nature, as well as the commercial that serves the neighborhoods even up in Timonium. And that's why I just I didn't know why the distinction. That's all. Yeah, I, I think from you know time to time as we've seen obviously in Towson, commercial does need to be re redeveloped. Um not so much residential. You don't you're like you know a huge overturn when you know a huge redevelopment when it comes to residential as much as you see the need for commercial. Again, particularly along York Road, which I'm familiar with. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. So, are we precluding the the uh, transition to um, residential of vacant commercial in established neighborhoods? Ask again, Kathy. So, are will this exclude the um, conversion to residential? of vacant commercial? No, no, I don't think that's what is intended. No, this is about the residential neighborhoods remaining as they are, but I think that's the Katie's point, I guess, that it would allow those to be, you know, renovated, redeveloped, some of the use. And certainly I would think mixed use development as we're seeing, um, you know, very successful mixed use developments uh, coming in. I think we want okay. to encourage that. Mr. Heckman, is your motion going to be as read or do you want to modify it? Do you want me to reread it? I, I think I think I agreed with Katie that we can insert residential be in front of neighborhoods. If you wouldn't mind rereading it with the changes. Happy to. Um, areas within the URL, not within connected neighborhoods and nodes, consist of a mix of established commercial and residential uses. Although much of this area is already developed, there is some limited opportunity for new and infill development and redevelopment. However, the nature and character of these residential neighborhoods should not substantially change within the near future. Not the, good. The, the neighborhoods are currently served with public water and sewer service. Okay, thank you. So, should not. Okay, good. 
Do I have a second? Second. Mr. Array. Yes. Miss Brophy. Yes. Miss German. Yes. Mr. Hafer. Yes. Mr. Heckman. Yes. Mr. Heinel. Yes. Mr. Hinton. Yes. Mr. Holipka. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. McGinnis. Yes. Mr. Perlo. Yes. Ms. Pinero. Yes. Mr. Warren. Yes. Ms. Wolfson. Yes. Motion carries. Okay, item number 19. I move to revise place type connected neighborhoods to read as follows. Areas connecting established neighborhoods and nodes that consist of a mix of commercial and residential areas where infill redevelopment could occur, including a variety of housing types, such as detached single family, townhomes and apartments. These places contain the population needed to support the node which they surround. Second. Mr. Array. Yes. Ms. Brophy. Yes. Ms. German. Yes. Mr. Hafer. Yes. Mr. Heckman. Yay. Mr. Heinel. Yay. Mr. Hinton. Yay. Mr. Halipka. Yay. Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson. Yay. Mr. McGinnis. Yay. Mr. Perlow. Yay. Ms. Pinero. Yes. Ms. Pinero. Yay. Mr. Warren. Yay. Ms. Wolfson. Yay. Motion carries. Item number 20. My motion to revise growth lane framework place types DF5 graphics for the place types and the PDF overview place types and for the place types to be consistent with revised definitions. Okay, may I have a second? Second. Second. Mr. Array? Yes. Ms. Brophy? Yes. Ms. German? Yes. Mr. Hafer? Yes. Mr. Heckman? Um, yep. Mr. Heinel? Yes. Yes. Mr. Hinton? Yes. Mr. Halipka? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Mr. McGinnis. Yes. Mr. Perlow. Yes. Ms. Pinero. Yes. Mr. Warren. Yes. Ms. Wolfson. Yes. Motion carries. Item number 21. I motion to remove the map image and growth framework place types GF5 to include the entire 415 acres of the Lafarge Quarry in the special use place for type designation. Okay. Ma Madam Chair, if I may ask Ms. Pinero, the, the intent here since it currently has established neighborhood as part of the overlay. And when, the, when this was mapped, when we mapped this for the uh, plan. So there you found. The, the entire the entire site was not identified for redevelopment in for the warehouses and industrial use. So just curious as to why the entire site would be identified for industrial and similar uses. I just, to be perfectly honest, thought that it was important to provide the entire site. Why not 
since this is the master plan 2030, why not include the, in, the entire property? Especially because I've, in what, you know, recently transpired. Any questions or comments from the board? If not, may I entertain a second? There was already a second. second. Mr. Array? Uh, Madam Chair, I still have a problem with this. Okay. So the Farge, it should not show as special, you, you know, use only one use. Okay, and 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 from what I know, part of it was mapped that way because the third showed warehouses and part of the property. So I don't think it's a good idea for, for to just have one use for the entire four hundred and fifteen acres. Thank you, Mr. Array. Are there any other questions or comments? Now, so is there a reason why it should be just, you know, for special use? Are you mis asking Ms. Panero? I am asking Ms. Panero. Is there a reason why it should be just for special use? And what impact, what does that do to us in the future? What does that do to the entire property in the area? And, what does, and what does special use mean? Um, to be perfectly honest, I just wanted to add the Lafarge quarry fully. I don't remember ever asking to have the special use place site designation. To be so, perfect, friends, now that I'm thinking back, I just wanted the whole map, the whole uh, acre, 415 acre property to be included because it was missing. So, the Department of, okay, Mr. Lafferty, what, what is your recommendation? Well, the way we mapped it initially was the way that we felt was more appropriate since only part of it was identified as for industrial use. Um, and the, the definition that we have currently in the plan does talk about industrial manufacturing areas um, that include other uses, um, in, which could include retail. And certainly, Trade Point Atlantic fits that. And with the proposal to build warehouses on the Lafarge part of the Lafarge property, we felt that it was appropriate. So is there a way you can give up some language on this, please? Well, we, we believe the original mapping of it uh, reflected what uh, that would entail for that particular property. And Ms. Pinheiro wants the entire property mapped as special use, whereas we had part of that uh, mapped as established neighborhood. So again, so what is your preferred language? Well, I guess we we the recommendation from the staff and through the plan is to maintain it as it is without changing the balance of the property to special use. I don't believe I requested the property to be listed as special use. I just wanted the entire property, the entire 415 acres to be listed not just what you deemed um, developable to, to be redeveloped. I, I could be wrong, it's been a long process, but yeah. that's, I, that's what I thought I remember. So, Madam Chair, so it means we cannot take a vote on this until the Department of Planning comes up with language that suits everyone? Why? What, what, what we can do? We have we have a motion. And a I have. Before. Um, I can revise my motion. I, I mean, I I think it says it right there to the left. Motion to revise the image in GF five 
to that indicates low forage quarry to include the entire 415 acres of the property. So you just thought your, your comment was that the map didn't include all 415, not to designate all of it for any particular use. Correct. Okay. Yeah, that, that's above my pay grade. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. I, okay. The, the, thanks for clarifying that. That was the confusion. Yeah. Okay. So, Ms. Panero, that's your motion. So it's yes. Okay, thank you. Is there a second? All right, Mr. Array. Yes. Ms. Brophy. Yes. Ms. German. Yes. Mr. Hafer. Yes. Mr. Heckman. Um, nay. Mr. Heinel. Yes. Mr. Hinton. Yes. Mr. Halipka. Mr. Halipka. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. McGinnis. Yes. Mr. Perlo. Yes. Ms. Panero. Yes. Yes. Mr. Warren. Yes. Ms. Wolfson. No. Motion carries. 22A. This is from the staff. Yes, ma'am. It is. So I'll go ahead and, and read this. It's motion to add the following statements to the growth framework place types GF5. Special use to read as follows. In the southwestern part of the county, Univers University of Maryland, Baltimore County, UMBC has a substantial presence. This highly rated public university is recognized for IT research, innovation, and commitment to diversity and equity. Located on 530 acres west of the Beltway and next to both Catonsville and Arbutus, UMBC has expanded its community outreach and has established a facility with the popular Oka Mocha Cafe in Arbutus. UMBC is also home to BW Tech at UMBC Research and Technology Park. The university also recently took ownership of the 200-acre Spring Grove property situated north of the current campus. No specific plans have been presented for this site that also contains state-operated psychiatric services and county-owned homeless persons shelters and recreational facilities. Thank you. Not the only that I, I would ask that somebody would make was to add that we would encourage development on the site that they want at the site. So, so this sounds like I'm I'm not trying to be skeptical. What is the purpose of this? Is is this just telling us? Is is this just storytelling? What does it really mean for UMBC? I I think the idea is to include it like um, Trade Point as a a special section. You know, it's a, a sort of a part of the county where um, special use. Types where let's see what do we what do we say about stuff for use? Um, that it just it may include a, a variety of uses in the future. So it's just identifying it as as some place to pay more attention to. Um, okay. I think. Well, in the in the next motion, there's a motion to um, define that special uses and it does not include residential. So if, if I may, Madam Chair, um, this was actually a recommendation that came from the public during one of the public went during the public hearing. Uh, in talking with the administration, we recognize that UMBC is a significant player on the west side of the county. Uh, and with its act, with its um, 
taking control of the Spring Grove property as well, sort of expands its footprint. Uh, it has a tech center. And as Ms. Wolfson just referenced, uh, the next two motions really expand the definition of special use so that it would address the research, technology, and innovation potential uh, at UMBC. Uh, we know that the current and former presidents of, the, of this college university are both pushing a lot more technology. Uh, and so just wanted to highlight it's significant on the west side. Uh, the proximity of both Cape and Bermuda's also tie it to residential uh, communities and the business districts uh, in a way that could really create a, a really pretty exciting dynamic. So that, that was the basis for inserting this. And thanks, Mr. Hay, for, for noting what nobody picked up before, which is we were using southeastern instead of southwestern <laughs> description. So. Uh, Dozens of people looked at it and didn't pick it up. So thank you. So that was the impetus, that was the impetus for creating special use designation. So, UM, so UMBC is used as an example of growth, potential, expansion. Yes, as well as growth on the campus of its technology and, and innovative research. Yeah, with them. Go ahead, with them. We, we also we also picked up a 200 acre parcel. This is in my district. We picked up a 200 acre parcel of property that we would give them the ability to expand the land law. And the only change I would ask staff to make to that is to add the section that we would focus or encourage development. Mr. Warren, you're going in and out. So um, can you clearly state what you want in there again? Sorry, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, we just see your forehead. Uh, well, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm trying to speak into the phone. So I'm outside. So I just want added to the line where Said that there hasn't been a plan, just say that we would encourage development at the previous mental hospital. Well, um, this is Mr. Halipka's uh, motion. Um, do you want to make amendments to it before we move it forward? Well, it was staff, so I'm not sure who gets okay, to sign it. That's, I was asking staff for that. This is Chris. I had a quick question for clarification. Sir. Okay. Uh, so what is the check and balance to UMBC being given the special designation? If they wanted to build a shopping center on Wilkins Avenue across the street from those beautiful old homes that are there, what what is, just quickly walk me through um, What's the what's the check on that? As a state institution, they're not bound by local zoning. Uh, although the relationship we've built with UMBC, I think they would be a cooperative partner. But depending if it's on their property, uh, the current zoning does not necessarily apply. So yes, to your point, um, if it's on their property, they could build a shopping center or apartments or you know, in a you know, research park or expand their research park. Okay, let me, um, thanks. Let me ask a, a different way, which is, so um, what I'm hearing is there's really no difference between what the current state is and what would happen if this if they be if they had the special designation. Uh, yes, that's that's true. It's really highlighting that they are they are sort of a unique player on that part of, in that part of the county. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Well, to to, Ms., to Mr. Warren's point, I, I don't know exactly what you would want inserted if there was any change, if there were any changes. 
I, I'll let it go. I just wanted to have something that said that we would encourage the development of the previous mental hospital. Great. Do we have a second on this motion? Second. Mr. Array. Yes. Ms. Brophy. Yes. Ms. German. Yes. Mr. Hafer. Yes. Mr. Heckman. Yes. Mr. Heinel. Yes. Mr. Hinton. Yes. Mr. Halipka. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. McGinnis. Yes. Mr. Perlow. Yes. Ms. Pinero. Yes. Mr. Warren. Yes. Ms. Wolfson. Ms. Wolfson. Yes. Motion carries. 22B. Again, this was a staff. This is sort of following on to the previous one, Madam Chair, as staff. So, if someone could make a motion. Yeah, a, a motion to add technology uses to the growth framework place types, GF5 special use graphic and overview table. Any questions or comments? I need a second. second. I know. Thank you. Mr. Ray. Yes. Mr. Thank you. Ms. Brophy. Yes. Ms. German. Yes. Mr. Hafer. Yes. Mr. Heckman. Yay. Mr. Heinel. Yes. Mr. Hinton. Mr. Hinton. Uh, he just dropped off. Okay. Mr. Halipka. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. McGinnis. Yes. Mr. Perlow. Yes. Ms. Pinero. Yes. Mr. Warren. Yes. Ms. Wolfson. Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. 22C. A motion to revive, revise the growth framework place types. Special use definition to read as follows. Include certain industrial manufacturing and research technology and innovation areas that may include limited other uses, including retail. By their function, they require their operation to be separate, except those with similar characteristics. Currently, this designation applies to the Trade Point Atlantic site, to the property commonly referred to as Lafarge Quarry, and to the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. Second, any questions? I think uh, earlier we did. Uh, I don't know that was so Scott that indicated that Trade Point Atlantic should be removed. I think it was removed above. I don't remember where exactly. No, that was removed from a different in a different uh, context. Right in a different context, but so it is in here. Does it make sense in here as well? No, I think it's the whole point here that these are places that could have a variety of of uses from industrial manufacturing, research, some retail, you know, like a trade point. They've got some stuff for the people that work there. Um, so no, I think it, it actually that makes yeah, sense. No better site in Baltimore County represents that more than trade point. Okay, any other questions or comments? If not, if, can I entertain a second? Second. second. Mr. Array? Yes. Ms. Brophy? Yes. Ms. German? Yes. Mr. Hafer? 
Yes. Mr. Heckman. Yes. Mr. Heinel. Yes. Mr. Hinton. Mr. Holipka. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. McGinnis. Yes. Mr. Perlo. Yes. Ms. Panero. Yes. Mr. Warren. Mr. Yes. Warren. Yes, Mr. I'm sorry. Yes. That's okay. Ms. Ms. Wolfson. Yes. Motion carries. Number 32, 33, excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm coming, I just lost my spot, one second. <laughs> if somebody else has it. Oh, wait, I'm, wait, 32? 23. 20, 23. 23, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was like, wait, I'm, I'm really off. Um, motion to add the following statement to the growth framework land use processes, GF6, where land use terms are defined or explained in the county code or BCZ, BCZR, those are the definitions that are followed in this document. Second. Any questions? Mr. Array. Yes. Ms. Brophy. Yes. Ms. German. Yes. Mr. Haper. Yes. Mr. Heckman. Yes. Mr. Heinel. Yes. Mr. Hinton. Thank you. Mr. Hinton. Mr. Halipka. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. McGinnis. Yes. Mr. Perlo. Yes. Ms. Panero? Yes. Yeah. And Mr. Warren? Yes. And Ms. Wolfson? Yes. Number 24A. Motion to revise sections of the Growth Framework Land Use Processes GF6 regarding CZMP to read as follows. This should take place over the course of 10 years in alignment with the decennial census and master plan process. Ideally, changes to zoning should, I believe it should be should occur, not would should occur through the uh, CZM, com comprehensive zoning process CZMP after the adoption of a master plan and following the recommend recommendations included therein. The comprehensive zoning map process occurs every four years and enables members of the public to submit requests for zoning changes to any piece of land to Baltimore County, regardless of ownership of the land. With the frequency of the CZMP, the council should have the ability to make updates to the master plan as needed to keep pace with changing needs and trends. Any questions? Yep. Go ahead. I was under the impression that we had taken out the 10 years. I wasn't at the last meeting, of course. I thought we had agreed on four years. Yep, we that's, we are growing four years. That's what. Yeah. The, okay, so it, that's what it should be. We're removing the ten years. So the first paragraph should probably go away. Then. Right. That's so okay. it should just be the second paragraph. So the first should, paragraph comes out. Uh, yeah. At least that's my understanding. Do you agree, Katie? Yes, I do. And if you go to the left, you'll see a lot that's taken out as well. But yeah, as I was reading that, I was like, wait a second, how is this happening? Yeah, remove the first paragraph uh, and begin with the comprehensive zoning map process, of course, every, occurs every four years. Okay, Katie, just for clarification, reread your motion, please. Right. Just uh, sorry, real quick. There's two motions here. I think we could just. Correct me if I'm wrong. Could we just go with the motion, the second motion, motion to remove all remaining content in the growth framework land use processes, GF six section regarding CZMP, beginning with rezoning every four years through and including into under resourced planning activities? Is that do they not just does A and B not just say the same thing? Uh, there are a second there are separate pieces in the text. No, you'll need to make a motion on the first one and then make that motion on the second one. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, Ms. Panero. 
So motion to revive sections of the growth framework land use processes GF6 regarding CZMP to read as follows. The comprehensive zoning map process CZMP of course every four years and enables members of the public to submit requests for zoning changes to any piece of land in Baltimore County regardless of ownership of the land. With the frequency of the CZMP, the council should have the ability to make updates to the master plan as needed to keep pace with changing needs and trends. Do I have a set? Any other questions? Second. Thank you, Mr. Array. Yes. Ms. Brophy. Yes. Ms. German. No. Mr. Hafer. Yes. Mr. Heckman. Um, yes. Mr. Heinel. Yes. Mr. Hinton. He's not here. Mr. Halipka. Can I remember something about Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. McGinnis. Yes. Mr. Perlo. Yes. Ms. Pinero. Yes. Mr. Warren. Yes. Ms. Wolfson. No. Motion carries. Chair, Chairwoman Hatchard. Chair, yes. I'm sorry. I just I just wanted to let you know that Mr. Hinton was back. Oh, he is back. Yeah, he Mr. just heard. Okay, Mr. Um, Hinton, did you hear the last motion and do you agree or disagree? He, he just dropped off. Oh. Never mind, he left again. My apologies. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> You're right, Taylor. He was back and he just got him off. You got to yeah. get him quickly. He, he came back and left. Never mind. You can move on. <laughs> I'm going to tell you all right now. I'm going to be saying your names in my sleep tonight. So. <laughs> I bet you. Same in the right order. That's all. <laughs> well, it's, five, it's, five after, it's five after midnight here. It's five after midnight, oh, the sun's Chris. still out. Oh my God. Oh, Chris, we give but it to you. Good but it's still it's still daylight, isn't it? Oh, Back on track. Yes, it's the uh, midnight, it's the 24 hours of sunlight here now. <laughs> so how would you know? Wow. That would change. Wow. All right, 24B. I motion to remove all remaining content in the growth framework land use processes GF6 section regarding CZMP beginning with rezoning every four years through and including into into under resource planning activities. So I guess everything to the left. Right. Yep. Second. Questions or comments? If not, may I have a second? Second. Mr. Array? Yes. Ms. Brophy? Yes. Ms. German? Yes. Mr. Hafer? Yes. Mr. Heckman? Yes. Mr. Heinel? Yes. Is Mr. Hinton back on? Mr. Halipka? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. McGinnis. Yes. Mr. Perlo. Yes. Ms. Pinero. Yes. Mr. Warren. Yes. Ms. Wolfson. No. Motion carries. 25A. Um, Emily, I'll do it. Um, I move to add the following statements to growth framework land use processes GF6 regarding CZMP. Study comprehensive zoning map process. The, Z, the CZMP and cycle zoning process should be evaluated and updated. The planning department and the planning board should undertake a comprehensive study to evaluate the effectiveness and efficiency of the current CZMP and cycle zoning process, and if appropriate, develop and evaluate options to the current CZMP and cycle zoning process 
including the timing of and the frequency of the processes. Any questions? Second. Thank you. Mr. Array? Yes. Ms. Brophy? Yes. Ms. German? Yes. Mr. Hafer? Yes. Mr. Heckman? Yes. Mr. Heinel? Yes. Mr. Hinton? Still not on? Mr. Blipka? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Mr. Perlow? Yes. Ms. Bonero? Yes. Mr. Warren? Ms. Wolfson? Yes. Motion carries. 25B. Um, I'll read that. Motion to revise vision framework. Livable built environment goal 1 action 8 to read as follows. The planning department and the planning board shall create a task force to study the current comprehensive zoning map process and cycle zoning process and make recommendations where the process may have opportunities for improvement to make it more effective and easier for retrofitting communities as suggested in the growth framework. Thank you. Any questions? Second. Second. Mr. Ray? Aye. Ms. Brophy? Yes. Ms. German? Yes. Mr. Hafer? Yes. Mr. Heckman? Aye. Mr. Heinel? Yes. Mr. Hinton's not back on? Mr. Halipka? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. McGinnis. Yes. Mr. Perlow. Yes. Ms. Pinero. Yes. Mr. Warren. Yes. Ms. Wolfson. Yes. Motion carries. 26A. Okay, here we go. I motion to revise growth framework development processes, GF7, to remove language recommending changes to the planned unit development process and to read as follows. Many of the development manuals used today were created decades ago and need to be updated in order to reflect modern day development practices. The definition and application process for a transit oriented development, TOD, needs to be more clearly specified. The planned unit development, PUD, process needs to be evaluated for its successes, transparency, clear articulation of eligibility requirements, community benefits, and ensuring a higher quality development is achieved at project end. Planned unit development process. A planned unit development, PUD, is develop development that may propose residential, recreational, industrial, and or commercial elements. The approval process for a PUD is similar to that of other land development projects, except that the county council must determine that the PUD will achieve substantially higher quality development than a conventional development and provide a public benefit that would otherwise not be obtained. This determination is made after having received input from county agencies and from the community following a community meeting and a public hearing. Any questions or comments? If not, may I get a second? I'm sorry, Madam Chair. Um, I think it says that we shall review it, but I think in the original language, planning suggested that there be a PUD task force that should review it. Um, I'm just wondering how, what, I, I think saying that we're gonna create a task force to do it um, would be a little clearer. I, I would I would want the planning board to review it. Yeah, yeah. and twenty six C, Mark. Yeah, twenty six C. It's the I had to break them down into separate motions, so it is actually in twenty six C. If you go down this. Okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do we have a second on um, Miss Panero's motion? Second. Okay, Mister Ray. 
Uh, Ms. Brophy? Yes. Ms. German? Yes. Mr. Hafer? Yes. Mr. Heckman? Yes. Mr. Heinel? Yes. Mr. Hinton's not back on? Mr. Halipka? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. yes. Mr. Perlow? Yes. Ms. Pinero? Yep. Mrs. Mr. Warren? Yes. And Ms. Wolfson? No. Motion carries. 26B. I motion to add the statement to the growth framework development processes GF7 after the sentence, PUDs are only permitted within the urban rural demarcation line, the URL, with the ability for the council to approve uses and densities not otherwise permitted by the underlying zoning, the PUD process has proven to be a valuable tool to allow for development and redevelopment in this mature jurisdiction. Questions? I have a comment, Jess, and I don't mean this critically. When when you use terms like a valuable tool, that's already sort of a value judgment uh, as opposed to just saying a tool. I mean, it's been an important tool, but one of the questions that was discussed earlier by the board is effectiveness and whether it's been successful. I think it was Mr. Perlow raised the question about we need to evaluate the successes, uh, and he's right. So I would ask or wonder if it's use necessary to have the language say valuable tool to be able to, it's the tool. Is it necessarily a valuable tool? Uh, I, 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 I believe so. I think it's a valuable tool and, and it's been successful in my mind. And that's a subjective term. And well, I agree with that. I, I don't think we need language like valuable in there. Agree. Well, I guess let's call a vote and see how it comes out. Okay, so we have Ms. Pinero's motion and do I have a second? Madam Chair. You know, Mr. A. Ray. Can we remove valuable? It should be a tool. Well, why don't we do this? We have a motion on the floor. I think we have a second. And if people just, if you don't want it in there, then don't accept the motion. And then we'll do another motion. How's that? Okay. Are you feel comfortable with that? Okay, Mr. Array. Uh, no. Ms. Brophy. Yes. Ms. German. No. Mr. Hafer. Yes. Mr. Heckman. No. Mr. Heinel. Yes. Mr. Hinton's not here. Mr. Holipka. Yes. Mr. Johnson. No. Mr. McGinnis. No. Mr. Perlow. Yes. yes. Ms. Pinero. Yes. Mr. Warren. Yes. Ms. Wolfson. No. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's five yeas and six nays. So motion carries. Uh, uh, be a majority or is a majority of all voting? I'm sorry, Mr. Lafferty. So there are 15 members of the board and you have seven votes in favor and six against. So right. it's a majority of those present. Yes, a majority of those present said they said yay. Okay. Motion carries. Okay. Motion to revise the section of the growth framework development process is GF7 to read as follows. The PUD process should be reviewed comprehensively by the planning board 
along with the impacts of the omission of the planning board in the approval process. The planning board should study the existing process and make recommendations to make it easier for retrofitting communities as suggested in the growth framework. Motion or second, whatever. No questions, then Mr. Array? Yes. Ms. Brophy? Yes. Ms. German? Yes. Mr. Hafer? Yes. Mr. Heckman? Yes. Mr. Heinel? Yes. Mr. Hinton's not back on. Mr. Halipka? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Mr. Perlow? Yes. yes. Ms. Pinero? Yes. Mr. Warren? Yes. Ms. Wolfson? No. Motion carries. Okay. Number 27. Nothing. Hold on one second. I'm trying to blow it up on my phone. To... So, Todd, this is the one that has um, urine Howard's name on it, but there's no suggested motion. I, I think you guys did most both just mentioned that the maps are vague, but there's no motion there. Howard, do you have any opinion? On it? I don't remember. Let it let it go. Thank you. <laughs> 28 is the same way. We have no suggested motions. There you go. Okay. Well, I cannot thank you all enough. Um, planning board, you've given so much time on this and uh, we still need to have a vote. We have to vote I, know on. We are. I know Todd, please. So, but I'm very grateful for everything you've all done. So, let's see where we are. Answer questions. Okay, if there's no further comments or questions, can I entertain a motion? There's already a motion on the floor, Madam Chair. Thank yep. you. And it's been second. Right? So, so this is on the, the Back to the agenda. As, as amended. Right. As amended. So do I I'm gonna do a roll call. Now that we have finished amendments and we have a motion in a second, the original motion to approve the master plan 2030 as amended. We will now do a roll call on that motion. I'll call your name. Please say yay or nay. Mr. Array. Yes and yes. <laughs> Ms. German. Yes. Mr. Heckman. Yes. Mr. Heinel. Yes. Mr. Holetka. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yay. Mr. McGinnis. Yes. Mr. Perlow. Yes. Ms. Pinero. Yes. Mr. Warren. Yes. Ms. Wolfson. Yes. Ms. Brophy. Yes. Mr. Hinton. Mr. Hafer. Yes. Well, Mr. Hafer, you're joining us from the farthest distance, and I know many of you are on vacation, and we're so very, very grateful for your service. Uh, this is the conclusion of our agenda. As a reminder, our next meeting is on Thursday, July 20th, but this will be an in-person meeting. And I'm sure I'm gonna get this to move. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. motion. Second and third. Thank you all. Have a wonderful 4th of July week weekend.
Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, you too. Good Thank job, you Matt. All planning department.